What do you know? What do you say? Thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining us one more time. This is uh, our They That Believe podcast for the gals and ghouls. Ha, ha, ha. This is the the time of the year when darkness falls a little sooner and the nights are a little colder. Halloween. This is our Halloween spooktacular that we've teased and promised. And we've got a full house. Full house today. Full table anyway. Uh, we've got, uh, as usual, Randall is sitting at the table with us. Gretchen has joined us once again to tell us some scary stories. And way over on the other side of the table is Nate the Great. Oh, Nathan, we do lots of talking about you. But this will be the first time folks have heard from you. I never did uh, we never did use your other pod because it was, well, it was unusable. Anyway, <laughs> say hi to the people. Hey. Well, let's talk about, since this is our first Halloween with Randall and stuff, maybe we should... Start with the kids. What do your kids do, or what do you do in the way of Halloween? Do they go trick or treating, or do you oh, guys? Yeah. They love trick or treating. We go all over town, and uh, you know we live in a small town, so you can see the kids going up and down all the streets, and so they go all through town, and all the grandparents and great grandparents, and they uh, they bring back lots of candy, which I rifle through to find all the good stuff before, when they go to bed. Well, sure, you got to rate it, and you probably have a pretty good neighborhood over yeah. there. I guess you're on a nice little residential street so mm-hmm. they're able to still go door to door we have because we haven't been in the we haven't been in this community that long so i don't know we haven't had a chance to see it. do they do the trunks or treats and any of that kind of stuff around here too yeah a lot of the churches do that i think our church did it last year and uh, it was pretty good so they they load up they load up on candy they're wired up for a good solid month mm-hmm. now, you, you don't do the jimmy kimmel thing where you tell them that you ate it all and then send the video in you don't do anything like that do you no i do i call it a candy tax there's a tax <laughs> oh, yeah, there's on a candy thing. that comes into the house and uh, a tariff yeah i must say i enjoy watching those videos whenever they do we're, it. we're teaching them about government <laughs> early t- in life yeah, a tariff before it crosses the border of mm-hmm. the uh of the living room at first uh you got to get your beak wet a little bit, right? It's funny when you see that candy because I think everybody in the world puts their candy in a big bowl when it comes home. And then so like the first week you'll eat all the chocolate and then, you know, some of the other stuff. But by like week four, you're down to like the Smarties and Jolly Ranchers and that kind of thing. I don't know what Nate's too big for trick or treat and we haven't really made any plans yet this year for him uh, i don't know what we'll do maybe nothing <clears throat> oh i'm already working on it we're gonna we're gonna dress up and stand out there and hand out candy that's what we're doing okay so let's talk uh, let's start here let's talk about the things that make us afraid things that 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 give us the frights now we are at the kitchen table and i'm already hearing a little bit of room noise today and the rattling you hear is not the uh, the chains of marley's ghost it's rabies tags of little four-legged haints that are running around here so, um, yeah, yeah. Isn't that a good word? Haints. I love haints. Yeah. Randall used that one a month or two ago, and I'm like, I, I need that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in my uh, in my tool bag. All right, Randall, we'll start with you. Um, I guess I know there there's something in particular I know that has frightened you uh, yes. or did when you were younger. Oh, that still frightens the heck out of and me. And we haven't really had a chance to delve into it yet. I was kind of saving it for this opportunity. So uh, tell us about that little thing that, that gives you the heebie-jeebies. Well, first, I would just like to say that my childhood was awesome. I don't want anybody to think that, oh, he was abused. But when I was about, I guess I was five or six, I watched this movie about this ventriloquist doll that went nuts and started killing people. And that that was the one with Anthony Hopkins? Was it that movie? I think so. I showed you the trailer for it. Yeah. Now I, I meant to look it up. Now I can't remember what it was. But anyway. Yeah, but I watched it and I was like five. And this was... This was one of several movies that summer that really got me. So it was right around my birthday time, and uh, I watched this movie, and I was scared to death. I was trying to be tough, you know, that I wasn't scared. And then, like, within a week, my mom bought me this Charlie McCarthy ventriloquist doll. And so I didn't want to admit that I was scared to death of this doll. Now, did she do that? Did she do that unknowingly? You know, I don't know. Knowing my mom, she probably did know and did it on purpose, but I don't think she realized how scarred I was from this doll. So it stayed in the closet in the original box that it came in, in the closet in the upper left-hand shelf with the closet doors closed for about four years, I think, (laughs) until finally we played kickball with it one day and it ended its life. (laughs) (laughs) Took him out and beat him up. Yeah. It was a cool, it was probably a really expensive doll too and... 
you know, my mom was always trying to get me to try new hobbies, and I guess she thought the girls would all like me if I was a ventriloquist. But yeah, right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Maybe just as well that you didn't pick it up. Yeah, probably. Uh, Maybe that was her plan. So. So you never, you never even tried it. Well, I tried it a few times, but it, uh, who it just it cre- gave me the creeps. His little just monocle and his little top hat thing just mm-hmm. couldn't get past. Now, it. is it specifically? Charlie McCarthy, or is it all it, dolls? And it's all dolls, okay. which is amazing because I've got three daughters. So, so my house, house looks like you know a Barbie, naked Barbies everywhere, and right. baby dolls all over the place. So, well, all right. I had a, uh, I probably told you this before. I had a um, Lester from Willie Tyler and Lester. If oh. you re- do, you remember them? I remember they were the, like a, a black Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Well, he would have come later. He was popular in the seventies, but yeah. I, he was. A, I had a black <laughs> Doc ventriloquist doll. I don't know why that's funny, but and, and I tried. He came with a like a a little forty five size record. Mm-hmm. It, it was like real thin, real floppy, but you know, and it had uh, Willie Tyler on there teaching you, you know, yeah, how, how to how to, how to, to talk perfect it. your ventriloquism yeah. skills. Well, here we go, my friend. Let me uh, let me shed some light on this for you. Pediophobia. Ooh. Pediophobia, also known as the fear of dolls. Mm. Now, you can take heart. I'm uh, pediophobic. This will, make you, this will make you feel a little better. It is relatively common. Mm-hmm. So don't think yourself too strange. Actually, when, once we get around to mine, you guys will look pretty normal. <laughs> it's an anxiety that can be associated with a range of dolls. From old-fashioned china dolls, porcelain dolls, to dolls that talk and move. Hmm. Pediophobia considered a branch of automatonophobia. And that probably more correctly is mm-hmm. maybe where, what you have. Uh, this automatonophobia is a, a fear of humanoid figures, like mm-hmm. ventriloquist dum- dummies, animatronic figures, yeah. things like that, that move on their own, like battery-operated. or That was right around the time like we went to Disney World, so maybe it was part of the small world thing too that kind of creeped me out do you remember like well you would have you probably at this point have been to chuck e cheese did they have showbiz pizza around this area in west tennessee did any of that kind of stuff bug you the animatronic yeah i I remember like seeing pictures of me at one of my birthday parties at chuck e cheese like screaming when the mouse came at me yeah that's that happens a lot yeah i think that's probably rooted in something else though yeah that's probably like just a kid thing yeah, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, it, Chuck E. Cheese. It looks a little monstrous. It's yeah. a, something distorted, and and mm-hmm. uh, okay. So there are theories connected to the possibility of how this pediophobia is caused. Some reasons include external events, uh, which in this instance may have just been that movie. I mean, mm-hmm. you watched a scary movie about it. Yeah. at a very young age, it was the exact same doll too. Like it was the Charlie McCarthy doll. Well, then it probably was that Anthony Hopkins movie because it did look. Yeah, that's what it did look a lot like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think tracing the roots of of your phobia back. I don't think we have to go too far. I don't it need a psychologist. To, nah, it seems figure pretty it out. apparent. You watched a scary movie and mm-hmm. and, and got the. Uh, impression in your young psyche already that it was something to be feared mm-hmm. it they say it also could be caused by heredity i don't know what that is i guess just maybe like, you could hurt you could pass it on to it your runs kids in your family like dolphobia. maybe it's good that you have girls because they yeah. just wouldn't they don't wouldn't think they would be oh they're as, not you wouldn't think girls if they're if they're abiding in their their gender uh traditional gender roles and playing with dolls and stuff that it wouldn't be as common in women, or I wouldn't think, but I don't know. I think the, the many thousands of dollars I've spent at the American Girl store, that God's up there probably cracking up at me yeah. to, to have such a fear of dolls, to be ordering them online and getting them for the girls and that kind of thing. Freud, Sigmund Freud, Sigmund Freud, the psychoanalyst, not the guys in Vegas with the, the tigers. Sigmund Freud claimed that... That's Siegfried. Freud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He claimed that children, that it was a common fantasy that children have about dolls coming to life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that sense, not necessarily or inherently unhealthy, but you can see that it kind of begins to get there if you're fantasizing or playing about your dolls coming to life and then for some reason associate it with fear. Mm -hmm. You can see where that goes. Uh, Another psychologist, Ernst Jentz, theorized uncomfortable or uncanny feelings arise when there is 
an intellectual uncertainty about whether an object is alive or not. I kind of like the, the what he's going with this, and, and it's even like when you, you you're walking in a store or something, and mm-hmm. you see somebody out of the corner of your eye that you think is over your shoulder, and it's a mannequin or mm-hmm. something. It's that it's in our our reptilian brain, our human nature, to be suspicious about something that we we don't know if yeah. it's alive or not. Especially, you can understand or think this would be aggravated if it has a if it has a humanoid appearance, if it looks like a person. Mm-hmm. Also, when a, an object that one knows to be inanimate uh, resembles a living being enough to generate confusion. Yeah, it's brain. usually the eyes. The eyes. It's like if they have the real looking eyes, yeah. that's like bugs the mess out of me. Uh, you know, and this is interesting too <coughs> because um, isn't that interesting? It's probably a little morbid, but at the point of of death, the eyes will dilate, right? And they get they get black, mm-hmm. and uh, and you often hear people or people that go into like coma or brain death when their eyes dilate and they're not responsive, mm-hmm. and you'll hear sometimes doctors or some, they'll say that doll's eyes because mm-hmm. that's the way doll's eyes look. You know that that complete black or very very mm-hmm. dark isn't that a line in jaws like the yeah 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 doll's eyes yes. dead eyes yes exactly <laughs> yeah, dead eyes like doll's eyes the person with pediophobia might usually this would not be you hide dolls that they encounter or refuse to go near them you're you i mean you have to be exposed yeah to them. you'd be uh the worst dad of the year if you thought you know. oh yeah yeah, if I just can you imagine that? Could, don't bring any dolls in the house. Or if they had to grow up and they go, "Our daddy would yeah. hide all our dolls because he was scared of them." He make us play with GI Joes instead of real dolls. You would end up giving them some sort of complex. Yeah. So does this not? Do, do you have delineations or distinctions on the dolls, like an action figure, or a three and a half inch, or a twelve inch GI Joe? Since you mentioned it, I mean, is that different? Mostly, as it's to- just the ones that like. The baby dolls have the eyes that are like the glassy looking eyes. Those bug me for some reason. I can deal with the ones that are like plasticky that don't really look real. But I got you. When the eyes look real, that that that's creeps me out. Now Nathan and I, we like to watch those ghost hunter shows. And one time they went to Island of the Dolls. Have you, know, you heard of that place? Uh, you know, I used to watch that uh, that ghost adventure show. And one of the intros, or like one of the from the commercials, is a doll that like turns its head and looks at you and its eyes open up <laughs> and I had to stop watching the show. It just it terrified me. Did you know I had heard this discussed recently and I tried to research it on the internet and, and there's a lot of talk about it, but I'm having a hard time finding if it's confirmed or not. I've not really seen it debunked or confirmed, but I'm pretty sure it's France that there's a law on the books in France that you can't have a, a doll either with a humanoid face or, or with a, a child's face. Have you ever heard that? I'm moving to France. That's yeah, true. I know, right? <laughs> uh, or, or a scary face. Maybe that's what it was. It can't have. I don't. I don't remember. But it was some. There was something in the law that was really unusual about how a doll can appear on the face. Okay, so let's move over uh, over to Gretchen. Okay. Tell people about what your your more common fear is. Is it something you already know, or is yeah, it? I hope so because I pulled Ooh, up tell some us stuff. He doesn't know. We want to hear that. <laughs> I won't be as prepared for that one. but <laughs> Well, I'm terrified of the dark. Oh. Absolutely. Stand there stiff, can't move in it, terrified of the dark. One of my favorite Iron Maiden albums, Fear of the Dark. <laughs> That's why it's called Fear of the Dark. And like Randall, you should take comfort in knowing that <laughs> it is relatively common. So you're not that unusual. It's actually more common or, well, maybe this won't make you feel better. It's most common among children. (laughs) (laughs) And to a varying degree, adults, fear of the dark usually, and this makes sense when you think about it. What are you afraid of? You're not afraid of the darkness. Afraid of what might be there. You're afraid of the possibility or the imagined dangers that are concealed Mm -hmm. by the darkness. It's not the actual dark, see. Some degree of fear of the dark is natural and that makes sense again going back to our yeah our primitive brain if you're sleeping in the wilderness or or sleeping in a cave and it's dark you don't know what's out there you know you've been out hunting and you know there may be other things ready to attack you and uh and especially as a phase of child development it, it can develop early most observers report that fear of the dark seldom appears before the age of two which raises a couple of interesting questions to me. One, how would they observe? How would they quantify that? Observing yeah. like a one-year-old. How would you know it was afraid of the dark? I guess they'd tell if it was 
on edge or something like that, maybe. the Wake up screaming in it, maybe, or something like that. Yeah. But see, that's what I share with the kids, is that I have an overactive imagination, they have an overactive imagination, and that's why we can't stand the dark. When a fear of the dark reaches a degree that it is severe enough to be considered pathological, sometimes called it, and it's weird because there's no one greek phobia or latin phobia name for fear of the dark it has a bunch <laughs> darkophobia darkophobia <laughs> that would make sense to me acluophobia nyctophobia which in there you hear nick to the greek word for night mm. scotophobia scoto meaning darkness uh or ligo or ligophobia Lig- ligo ligo meaning twilight mm. all the kind of amounts to the same thing and again our friend sigmund freud considered the this is interesting freud kind of had a a unique take on it as, as he did with most things. Mm-hmm. He suggested that the fear of the dark is a manifestation of a separation anxiety disorder. Hmm. You know, that there's a separation or an isolation that comes with being in the dark. I always figured it was like a claustrophobic thing. Like, you know, people that are claustrophobic fear tight spaces. I don't know though. See, if it's <clears throat> me and I don't particularly, I don't think I'm particularly claustrophobic, no more than the normal person. Mm-hmm. Nor do I think I have a fear of the dark. I don't think I probably have any fear of the dark. But if you were to ask me what would frighten me more, being in a pitch black small room as mm-hmm. opposed to a large room, I think I'd be more frightened in a larger room. Yeah. Don't you think? You think there'd be more error or more more ways for that to go bad? There's a larger area concealed in the darkness that you don't control. There's a bigger area for the boogeyman to hide in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You can come at you from from you know. Yeah. I can get my back in the corner. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah. can give yeah. you a, I can give you a story. Just recently, I was in the restroom at school. I teach at school, and on the way out, one of the teachers just flipped the light off. You know, like she would at home, and I was in there, and I I have a sense of losing all control. So good thing you were on the pot, probably right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, lose control there. As to- <laughs> I'm so slow. That took me. That was like a joke grenade. Randall pulled the pin and threw it, and it, it took about a half second to get I was across just the thinking, table. As soon as she said bathroom, Nate laughed, and I was like, oh. But all I can think about is, am I going to find the light switch? Am I going to find the door? Can I get myself out of here? And of course, this bathroom has two doors. And I didn't realize, but the switch is at the second door. So I'm feeling around at this door where I'm at, looking for that light switch and just getting, the panic is just rising. I finally found it and got out of there. Now, is this something that you... glad you got out, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. And she lived to tell about it. Hopefully not too terribly messy. (laughs) Is this something that that you, you think developed? Can you track it back to a certain point or event or 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 is this just something that you just kind of had you you're one of these that got it in childhood and just carried it over got in childhood i don't i there wasn't like any specific anything i just remember thinking you know when the lights are out i've got to get them turned back on i've got to get that's it do you see anything in yourself in freud's idea that there's a a separation anxiety yeah is it that deep you think you'll buy that (laughs) yeah um, i mean it mostly just goes you know, to where I feel like I'm going to lose control. Let me ask you this. Let me let me play Freud for a minute, though, and psycho psychoanalyze you. You're in a pitch black room, mm-hmm. and and your your fear of the dark kicks in. Now, are you less frightened or equally frightened if someone is there with you as opposed to being there alone? If someone's there with me, I don't feel frightened at all, really. When I when I was younger, I did, but not now. Not at all. Like when if I'm with you and it's dark, I'm I'm fine. But if I'm all by myself, I panic. Hmm. To get to okay. the light. <laughs> okay. Head towards the light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Caroline. Because I mean, it's it's gripping fear. I mean, it literally it has me just all my senses are just taking control, and Is that I, bad? I have it's, to get. It's crippling. Yes, I have to get I mean, to light, I or I feel like I'm going to pass out. I, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Well, maybe I'm you afraid should, I'll pass, pass out before I get to You'll be unconscious, light. and then it's yeah. okay. <laughs> then the darkness would really save you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I you, don't, you can't see it. I don't think I you can. Don't know, how do you know you're passing out? You can't see it getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> and I've often wondered if I were blind, would it make any difference? <laughs> yeah, probably, and I, t- I tell you why. I saw this uh, or read this recently, and I don't know if we can, even if I explain this or say this, I don't know that we can understand it. When we close our eyes and we see 
black or everything goes black. That's not what blind people experience. Mm -hmm. Blind people don't get that. They don't have anything. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not sure if I fully understand it. I saw somebody trying to explain that, but they're like, it's not like when you close your eyes and you get the black. It's like there's nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that makes sense. So maybe that. Yeah. I mean, there's you can still see kind of a pink haze, I guess. But when, if you're if you're blind, you, you could, couldn't even you see that. You can see black, but I mean, I don't guess a blind person could actually see black and know what black is. Right. Yeah. There's There's literally nothing. Mm-hmm. And, and that that concept, I think, is hard to communicate. But anyway, you, you get the general idea. Nate, I didn't know for sure that you were going to be sitting in here. I didn't, so I didn't really prepare anything. And I'm not really sure if I had to label a fear for you. I don't. These guys, I kind of already had a head start. <laughs> do you, Do you have anything in particular? I have two. Well, tell Tell me about them. Clowns and uh, what lurks in the dark. Clowns. So you're one of those <laughs> afraid of clowns people. They're weird. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I go along with that. Do you? Yeah, I can almost see a, not directly, but some sort of correlation between that and your dolls. Uh, <laughs> what do What do you think that's about? I mean, are you afraid? Because clowns should be with the rainbow wig and the red nose and the floppy shoes. And I mean, are you afraid he's going to hurt you? Or yes. what do you What do you experience when you? Uh, well, there's. I'm just completely terrified. Like you go to a haunted house and it's just weird. But like a haunted yeah. house clown is different than like a circus clown. Yeah. Would you be afraid of a circus clown? Yeah. Or? It's weird. They got this like white makeup on. You don't know what their facial expressions like. You don't know what they're gonna do next. It's weird. So if you're a bull rider, <laughs> and you get thrown from a bull, and you're in danger of being gored or trampled, and the rodeo clown <laughs> runs out, which way do you run? <laughs> Where's the rule? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's quite that bad. Now let me tell an inter- interesting story about Nate. Uh, something that I saw in him is when he was younger, four, five, six or so, he was afraid of almost nothing. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking about a kid that uh, at the age of let's see, it would have been two thousand six. So you would have been four, five. five. About to turn six. Let me tell you what about this kid. At five years old, he walked every inch of the haunted farm in Medina. Really? <laughs> mm-hmm. I went with him now, but now this was, you have to get the picture. And for about five minutes, he became, you know, a local celebrity, at least in the parking lot. Yeah. Because everybody was now just enthralled with this five-year-old that went through the haunted farm. You know, there's grown yeah. men and women out there having meltdowns. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, now I walked with him, and I wasn't real sure, but, you know, he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll give it a try. And he even seemed a little hesitant, and that's probably because he had no idea what to expect. Mm-hmm. I think we even, we as grown-ups know what to expect when we go to one of those kind of haunted attractions. Now, at the time, I had worked or was working the for The dog is cracking me up. He's yeah, joking. they want to get up on the table and get up in here. I was I had work was working for the city of Medina, and the day before, two days or so before, when they were setting it up before it opened to the public, we would go in during the daytime. We would walk it, and there were also uh, alternative routes or avenues inside. Like if you needed to make a hasty exit, mm-hmm. or if emergency first responders need to get in and out very quickly, you know, we we kind of knew where those were. So I was comfortable going in with him because I knew. You know, what's the worst that could happen? He gets halfway through or a third of the way through, starts to really freak out. Then what do you do? You yeah. got to back him up or uh, or take him all the way through. Well, I knew that I could get him out an escape hatch if mm-hmm. I had to. But I'm going to tell you what. He walked every bit of that thing. And the only time, the only time he, he, he really, right at the end, he he kind of lost it. And, and I tell you, I tell you why. It was, I think, only because he got startled mm-hmm. as we were coming toward the end, and we, you know, the end is in sight. There's the light at the end of the tunnel. One of these yahoos with the chainsaw, chainsaw. Mm-hmm. came right up behind and <laughs> started it up, and it, and it startled him. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were kind of at the point where we were thinking this thing is over. You see the light at the end he, of the tunnel. He really kind of lost it, not severely, but I could see that 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 shift happened. It was like, ooh, but fortunately. It was the end, and, and, and we were done. And so we marched him around, and, you know, here's the five-year-old that went through it, you know, and everybody's like, aren't you a big chicken? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember going through I remember through? that tunnel. 
I, I remember that tunnel. What tunnel? With the the tunnel, yeah, the tunnel with the chainsaw. Oh, right at the end where they came. Could they you came. imagine what type of person at a haunted house or whatever sees a five-year-old and goes, ooh, here's my shot? <laughs> well, <laughs> to that, I'll say this. I do – they kind of communicate with each other, and you would hear them call ahead, oh, we got a kid coming through. But they did that for everybody because there were other kids who were trying it. Mm-hmm. And they would dial it back. Okay. They would dial it back a little, you know. They go, okay, we got a little one. We got a kid coming through. But what's strange with him, though, as he got older, and he would watch horror movies, mm-hmm. and was unfazed, mm-hmm. and and it was the most amazing thing. Like you were talking about, you watch a scary movie as a little kid, it scared you. Yeah. And I'd be like, that doesn't bother you. And he was like, even at four and five, he's like, it's just a guy in a mask. He got it, and he knew that, but. As he got older, when he got like school age, then he started to get easily scared. We couldn't watch scary movie at night all of a sudden. I'm like, what happened? You're why are you regressing? The monsters became real. Spent too much. Now time he with makes women. me tuck him in bed. Oh. <laughs> oh. He says, "Come on, come with me. T- turn the light on first. Oh. You go in there first. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Any any potential girlfriends out there? That is Nathan." <laughs> Did you tuck, tucked into bed by Gretchen? She just okay. went there. Yes. Uh, uh, she just yeah. went there. That, that's worse than pulling up potty training pictures, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Stepmama's got to tuck him in. <laughs> do, you, do you have any insight as to why that happened? You may not. Why it, it's so? When you were so little, you seemed unfazed and unscared. But then as you got a little older, you seemed more easily scared, and then you couldn't watch the scary movies and go to bed and stuff. What, do, you, do you have any idea why why that worked that way? I think I spent too much time with people that were afraid of them things. Okay. Other people or, instilling or fear. It was contagious. And maybe that had something to do with it. When we were doing these things and, and watching movies and going through the haunted farm, I was there with them. I wasn't afraid. Maybe that has something to do with it. If you watch, you get a, a sympathetic or a learned response from from somebody else. All right, well, I'll continue to let Nathan have the floor. Now we'll talk about mine, which, again, compared to uh, uh, with fear of the dark and dolls and clowns, mine's going to seem really silly. And I don't even know if Randall knows this, but Nathan, do you want to tell him about mine? you want to tell him what I'm afraid of? To be honest, I've never really seen you afraid of anything. Oh, well, you have. I don't know. You're not I'm, thinking I'm, of I'm it, are I'm kind of shocked. You, you'll, you, Gretchen will know. You must keep a straight face. I'm really trying good. to come up with it. I can't even think of it. You don't. You don't really show it. Well, it. it uh, in their defense, it's not something that I encounter a lot because it's. I'm not as likely to run. Oh, it. oh I remember. Wait, wait, hold on. Here it comes. Go ahead. It's horses. Thank you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Equinophobia. Equinophobia. Or or hippophobia. Hippophobia. Psychological fear of horses. Now I'll say this: I how much we would I would consider a phobia. I don't know. Thank God we live in modern times. If we lived in the Wild West yeah. days, you'd be done. Yeah, or, or even medieval times where you had, anytime you no, had to. No, I'll walk. I, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'll walk. Yeah. But it'll take you three months. It's fine. It's fine. I'll I walk. couldn't farm. Maybe I, I think I'd be okay with a mule. But the, there are some that, that, have, that have it severely that they can't, can't see any hoofed animals, can't see them on TV. Mm. Or, you know, pictures and even, you know, thoughts. or That doesn't bother me at all. For me, well, let me start back at the beginning. The equinophobia derived from the Greek word phobia, meaning fear, Latin word, equus, horse, hippo, also derived from a Greek word for horse. And there are symptoms with it severe, terror, anxiety, panic, shortness of breath. That's what you were, it's kind of what you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Nausea and crying. I can't ever see throwing up at a horse, but for me, it's it's being in the presence of the phobia, and this applies to me. The phobia can also be caused by a simple fear of the animal itself. So that, let's get back to the basics. What what caused your fear of horses? I have absolutely one hundred percent no idea. Did you get like maybe beaten up while watching Mister Ed or nope. something like that? It's generally just the size. The, the the large t- unnatural teeth, right? It makes me think of like the you know the wind up the wind up the, the, wind up, so the doll's eyes, yeah, the sharks, the jaw dead shark eyes. eyes, the dead eyes, horse eyes, and they eyes. get crazy. They get crazy eyes, like when they you're because they're on the side of their head, 
and they get going and it's like if you're standing there beside one and you're trying to pet him or something and that eye gets going to the side up and down Which, and around as a dog lover you know horses are considered just a large dog so that that kind of no, no so, connection. So there? our Native American brothers and sisters. Thought. I don't, <laughs> okay, so I, I have. Don't, I don't know what science book you're reading out of. I, but. I have a funny story about Dave's fear of horses. This is just great. We went to the UTM rodeo, and we were maybe <laughs> three seats away. <laughs> they wanted to sit close. <laughs> So this horse, of course, comes over and starts bucking. Horse, of course. Did you catch that? <laughs> this horse, of course. <laughs> Unless, I of remember. course. He started bucking. <laughs> you have equinophobia. Listen, listen, listen. And he kicked the gate right in front of Dave. <laughs> Dave. The metal railing. <laughs> he jumped up. Dave jumped up faster than I've ever seen him. <laughs> he went like 10 rows up. He was like, that's it. I've had enough of those, this clothes. Those back, <laughs> those back hooves he kicked. and He hit that, hit that metal rail, man. <laughs> Look at that. The horse must have peed up here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a shotgun blast. Boom. I was like, yep, I've, I've had enough. I've seen enough. But that's that's all it is for me is just I just don't want to be close to one or around one. There's just something that gives me the uneasiness. I get unsettled. It feels like I'm in the presence of danger. Like this thing could bite or kick or just go nuts at at any moment. (laughs) And no, I don't have a precipitating event or anything that ever happened to me. I I remember once, maybe twice in childhood, you know, somebody put me on one to ride. And that wasn't like a real ride. You know, it was like Mm -hmm. once around the park while somebody led it or whatever. And I remember as a kid when I even tried, I got on one and I started doing like I did in the movies. I started trying to kick him like (laughs) spur him. And and the person I was with, the, you know, whose horse it was, said, oh, no, 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 don't do that. You know, he'll take off. But, I mean, I obviously was not afraid. Mm-hmm. And it, it just in adult life, I mean, I, I don't know. If I get near one, man, it just it makes me so uneasy. It's, they're so unpredictable. Maybe like a growling dog or something. Mm-hmm. I get the same when I see them teeth and <laughs> it starts doing that and then showing them teeth and them crazy eyes on the side of its head. That's the way I would compare it, like if you're if you're near – like a, a growling dog or something, mm-hmm. you're like, hmm. See, I've had a, a friend that hates dogs. I mean, can't stand dogs. He's scared to death of them. But I've noticed anytime he gets near one, the dog starts freaking out. I think it feels like that it's yeah. Yeah. that the guy's really nervous around it or whatever. And I'm aware, I've been told that, and I'm aware of that with horses too, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, that's fine because I just assume if, if I'm freaking him out, I just assume back away and, and, and not be near him. All right, well, let's uh, examine now. I'm going to give you some science. We'll drop some science on you. The science about why we're afraid of things. And as we've already touched on, most of it is, is even though some of it has gotten a little complex, you know, with clowns and things like that in, in our in dolls in our modern age, it all comes back to that, that primitive brain. It's an emotional response to something that we perceive or our body, our brain perceives to be dangerous, whether it really is or, or not. Uh, it focuses attention. It prepares us to act. We, people always talk about that that fight that or fight or flight yeah. fight or flight response. So it's it's all surrounded by uh, this idea of trying to protect yourself or to survive. Right. Right. Even if you know intellectually, you know logically that you know the doll is not going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. But there's a perception, the brain has a perception of danger that's wired into this predisposed phobia. Uh, it's basically a chemical response. Something frightens us, the part of the brain called the amygdala, it triggers a physiological response that we know is fear, right? Danger, Will Robinson, danger, danger. After that initial fear response, the neocortex, the more recently developed part of the brain that's larger in humans than it is in other vertebrates that's interesting Mm -hmm. and maybe why our our phobias and fears are so complicated uh you know animals would not give half a thought to the things that we are afraid of something that would eat them if something would eat them they're afraid of it if it doesn't then yeah they're fine with it yeah so the the neocortex kicks in after the the fear response kicks in and evaluates the situation and it draws kind of on the, own, the wisdom of its own owner's brain to determine whether there's really a danger. So there's always an evaluation, mm-hmm. uh, you know, how much trouble I am. And that's when you, you can kind of calm down and go, do I need to be afraid of this? Is there a real reason? How can I protect myself? You know, it starts to kick in. Then there's your fight or flight. Do I need to run away from it? 
or do I need to be prepared to square off? Uh, we were talking about these haunted attractions. If somebody jumps out at you in a haunted house, uh, at first you're going to scream because you're ah, you're surprised or startled or shocked. But and that's your your amygdala and your fear response. But it may take you a few seconds for your neocortex to do its job. It kicks in and says, "Okay, we've evaluated. There's no immediate threat. It's the guy. It's the guy in the mask. Chill out. Yeah, relax. You don't you don't need to uh, to freak out." And this is why you go why children are so, are so much more prone to things you know monsters in the closet and under the bed and stuff because their neocortex isn't developed mm-hmm. like an adult's right so their fear response kicks in but they don't have that neocortex working to tell them to intellectually evaluate it to tell them that there's no danger or anything like that that's why they rely on their parents mm-hmm. grown-ups have to tell them it's okay it's going to be okay there's no monsters under the bed but they don't have that neocortex to kick in and to reasonably evaluate they don't have the experience the life experience and fear and anxiety i think these things get mixed up in our fear an immediate response anxiety is kind of comes before mm-hmm. it's the anticipation right of, of of danger when the music starts playing at the horror movie right musical yeah. cues to mm-hmm. get up your dread and your anxiety sh- 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 and some of the best <laughs> you know what though it will we, we may talk about some movies in a minute but you know some of the best movies the best horror movies or scary movies do a better job not so much with the scares and the fear but the anxiety Mm -hmm. that's if you you can watch something and it just gives you a sense of dread throughout the whole thing a lot of the older movies were like that there wasn't a whole lot of blood or gore but they were scary and the newer movies it seems like they relied more on blood and people's heads exploding what we would call fear we say it was more scary is really that it's that anxiety that, Mm -hmm. that dread and and it even comes from the anxiety comes from root fears, you know, financial problems, uh, someone hurting you, flying snakes, scary stories, stuff like that. Now, with prolonged anxiety, the cellular structures of the body have to constantly struggle. Right? There's mm-hmm. this constant brain work and a cascade of hormones, the fear response, and up and down, and that can actually lead to physical problems. This was with stress, mm-hmm. right? You know, a high blood pressure and appetite and stuff like that so how we cope well before you as you prepare to face something that's fearful say you're you're going into a job interview Mm -hmm. okay you know reasonably before you go in that they're not going to try to kill you right all right very unlikely Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's no reason to entertain see that fear response is already kicking in that fight or flight but it's not necessary right Mm -hmm. the primitive brain is wondering if there's a danger, but there is no real danger right. other than, you know, you might not have a good interview, but nobody's going to, there's no predator in there that's going to try to eat you. Mm-hmm. So they, the experts suggest, imagine that play it out in your mind, see it and be it. Imagine what you're going up against and, uh, uh imagine yourself responding and being prepared. If this happens, how I will do that so that you're already, you've already kind of done it in your mind before you go in there. All right, so yeah, let's talk about TV and movies. Gretchen touched on these ghost shows that she watches, <laughs> which I think are absolutely ridiculous. Do you watch the? <laughs> they are. They're so, so stupid. They're Do funny. you watch the ghost shows? I watch some of them. They're they're pretty funny though, really. They're strictly for entertainment. Do you not get bored? I mean, the same so, thing. Or was it? You know, was my you that? my attention span these days is like five minutes maybe at anything. So. I can watch one until the first commercial break, and then I'm switching channels. But some of them are kind of funny, you know. The and there's some that you can tell are like super fake, mm-hmm. like everything in them is manufactured. Like, yeah, like all of them. Yeah, well, I mean, some of them are really think that there's science behind the ghost stuff. And do you think some of those those guys actually are there? Is there some sincerity there? Do you think any of those I think folks a couple really of those buy guys, that? I mean, even though they're probably misdirected and. But I think there's actually some some people that are like, oh, well, if I have this meter and it spikes, then that must mean there's something funny here when there's like a wire in the wall live or something, you know? Yeah, all the stuff they went and bought from Radio Shack. Yeah, <laughs> all that, and there's like there's hard science behind it. You know, it's yeah. like, well, who de- who who had the idea to do that? Who developed the idea that if you use this device and it responds in this way that it will it always seems so arbitrary to me I, I, you know, do you wonder if ghostbusters the movie hadn't come out 
if none of that would have happened, like none of the handheld devices, because they had that little, what was it, a EK something meter? Yeah. That they ran it in the list of tool things that yeah. came out of it. And and even the ones like if you, and don't look them up because they're stupid, but even <laughs> that we have people even in our region, in our area that have these, I don't know what you call them, paranormal clubs and re- yeah. ghost research and stuff. And of course, if you sign up or go out with them, you know, there's, there's a buy-in to get your equipment and stuff mm-hmm. too, which conveniently yeah. you can buy from them, right? From oh, their of online store, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So you and get the one it. you bought on your own may not work as well as the ones we sell. Well, did you get? Did you get? Well, there's an upgraded one now yeah. too. That one's uh, you got to get the dash four or five. So. No, no self-respecting ghost hunter uses that one anymore. <laughs> that was that was last season's yeah. uh, electrograph. Yeah, you know, I do I do know people that legitimately think that they live in a haunted house yeah like i mean for real we'll tell you that there's a ghost upstairs they named it and they've had people come out and investigate it so uh, you know and i'm i'm sorry no, i'm not sorry why should i apologize this is my microphone you go get your own microphone and get on the internet and say whatever you want to that's say right for anybody listening but folks for real I, okay ghosts are not real I'm sorry. I, I know. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm glad this isn't our Christmas pod, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> think about that one a minute. Ghosts, aliens, man, Bigfoot, all that stuff. Oh, no, Bigfoot's real. Yeah, right. And, and <laughs> wrestling's real and the moon landing is fake. And all. Yeah. They, there you go. The earth so. is flat. That came out last week. Somebody said the earth was flat and had proof. There's still some flat earth people yeah. out there. And that's about that's about the level that I... Man, you know, and I know the stuff is interesting. I know it's entertaining. I watch the ghost movies, you know. I mean, those are fiction. I don't, I just, I. It, it's my cynical, skeptical nature. If you put on, like, a show that qualifies itself as some kind of a reality show, and I'm supposed to watch it and become engaged that they're, I, I'm not. It, it turns me off, and, I, you know, if it's fictional, if you go, well, this is a fictional story, I can watch a ghost movie or something uh, the same way I can watch a movie about aliens and a movie about Bigfoot and a movie about whatever else. But we, there's something in us that wants so desperately to, and I even think even in that, I, I keep throwing in aliens and Bigfoot and stuff, even in cryptozoology and mm-hmm. alien Ness monster and- It all kind of appeals to the same yeah. thing in our psyche. And I'm not, the people are so desperate to want something to touch with the supernatural. Right. Well, well, let's get back to somebody that actually watches these shows now that I've mm-hmm. completely torn them down. Tell us about your experience watching these and what, what evaluate for me, describe to us what you see, evaluate for me what you think you're watching and quantify maybe how much of it is real and how much of it is reality TV. Oh, I don't think any of it's reality TV, but I, uh, I usually this time of year I I get those ghost stories out and and start watching all the spooky stuff. That's about all it, it consists of. It's this time of year, and by the time Halloween's over, it's pretty much done. Yeah, but you've been watching those ghost shows two two years regular though. No, I ghost, have not. Ghost yeah. Adventures and no, we haven't even had is, satellite for a year. Is, my house is haunted. My and, favorite is the one that's got the. The girl psychic that goes through the house and she like gets the feelings from everything in there, and then they have the real detective that goes through mm-hmm. and like. Oh yeah, yeah, paranormal witness. Yeah, but see, yeah. I kind of steer steer clear of stuff like that, like especially if they're talking about a demon and you know those kind of things. I stay away from. See, that's a real rip off. That's somebody that's <laughs> even too cheap to go drop a hundred, two hundred bucks to get the equipment. Yeah, uh, I just feel, I, feel, I feel things. I feel that there's. <laughs> Uh, okay, so they got that sanitarium in Waverly that's supposed to be haunted. And this time of year, it's like a big tourist trap. Would you guys spend the night in the Waverly Sanitarium? No. I wouldn't for fun. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, there's better ways. I'd, it, uh, what you're asking is, is there is there a scenario in which I wouldn't? Right. The idea being that we wouldn't stay there because we're scared. I wouldn't. I don't, I'm not inclined to do it because it's a waste of time. Now, if you told me, you know, if you're going to drop 50 bucks on me and bring me a sack of crystals while I'm there or white castles. Yeah, I'm in, uh-huh. you know, Oh, I wouldn't have a problem doing it, but I mean, yeah. I'm not going to go do it just to show somebody I can or Gretchen just said no. So Gretchen, why, why do you think? No, 
I'm not going to chase this stuff down. I mean, it's probably going to be dark. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to be dark. No I just like to. It's just entertaining to me. It just entertains me. That's it. At this time of year for Halloween. Well, and it's easy to say, you know, look, there's no such thing as ghosts and all that. But I mean, you, under in the right environment, in the right circumstances, you can still frighten people. I mean, oh, yeah. I can still get creeped out, even when I watch a, a movie that I know is just just fiction. Is just a movie. You know, if it's scary enough. It'll give you that feeling, and you can sometimes still get creeped out, even if you can go, there's probably no real danger here, but I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is no, this is no good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of them guys on that that Ghosted, is it Ghost Adventures, mm-hmm. isn't that the show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because one of them guys got fired from the show a year or two ago, and then he came back and was explaining how they, it's like if they go in, is it AMC or A&E, which it's one of them A channels. Yeah. Whichever channel it's on that the their producers, like if they'd go in with their, recorders and they didn't pick up anything like any what do they call that where they hear the EVPs. voices the evps yeah that they would send the crews back electronic in. voice phenomenon yeah the, the guys on the the show the actors or the crew or whatever they'd go back in and record it themselves just so they'd have something to play and the guys like look you know this the producers are anytime you get television involved in tv producers yeah you know and i'm sure i know there are people that are convinced that oh i've had them tell me that Hey, yeah. I sat there and talked to it and looked at it across the table, and we had tea. And the best one I saw, they were in a, like a seemed like it was like a subway or something, like an underground subway, not like the restaurant where you get the sandwiches. But they were yeah. they were in this place, and then they got all these crazy readings on their thing, and they start seeing all these lights flickering and stuff, and so they're like freaking out, you know, that they they finally got proof that there's ghosts there, and then at the end of the show, they're like. Uh, yeah, all that was they were doing inventory down the street, and they didn't tell them that they weren't supposed to be I saw there. That. I know what you're talking about. I think I did see that. I yeah. remember that. But and, and and those are you do kind of appreciate that when they there are some that I've seen, and maybe it's some of those shows you watch too. They seem to spend much just as much time trying to eliminate anything. Debunk. Of course, that's that. What does that do? That yeah. gives you the appearance of legitimacy right. too. Mm-hmm. If if every other one you can go, well, this one wasn't real because we did with our science and with our science machines and <laughs> our ghost machines, we determined that it wasn't yeah. it wasn't real. I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody not to watch that, that stuff if you enjoy it. That that's fine, but just keep it in perspective. Please don't give people your money. Please don't give yeah. people your money. I, I tease her and. But I don't care what kind of Gretchen wants to watch those kind of shows. They make her happy. That's fine. I tease her. That's fine. I love her. Uh, the The day that it's going to create a problem is if she wants to go on a, with the paranormal research team. And, Come in the house. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I dropped a couple hundred bucks on my bag of equipment. Sometimes you got to tell those women what they want to hear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> not this time. I'll say that again. Not this time. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what you It is not okay that you dropped a bunch of money on some stuff that these guys scavenged out of the dumpster at Radio Shack mm-hmm. and put you know put some tinfoil on it and dressed it up and made it look like. And it's always old looking. Yeah. I'm like, we have cell phones and, and tablet computers, and they yeah. get this old stuff that looks like, looks like, like something micro came out of the, cassette recorders. The cockpit and, of a B-52 or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, you scavenged that from the dumpster at, at Radio Shack, put some wires on it. 200 bucks. You got to have this. Not the last, that one was from last season. We yeah. used the, the, this season. These are made in 1945. They're better. Yeah. They're older. They're more authentic. Now. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's old they guitar amp do, thing. They knew how to hunt ghosts back then. Yeah. This much, uses the latest tube technology. It was much easier when people just believed you when you, because they had no internet. They had yeah. no video or something. People actually believed you. It's like the whole, man, and you hate to ruin this too. You know, we live in. We live in Tennessee, and of course, Tennessee famous for one of the biggest hauntings in the world, the Bell Witch. <laughs> and all it takes is five minutes of research and reading to figure out that whole thing was a, was a bunch of hokum. Yeah. The whole time that John Bell was alive, there was never any talk of it. This this stuff about there was because there was some that legend about Andrew Jackson visiting there that has never been confirmed. There's no record of that at all. The whole Bell Witch story and all the haunting and stuff surfaced years later when John Bell's son was grown, everybody else was gone, and he was having financial problems. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. You know, and here comes this story. And and, and you cannot convince people of that. And even the, um, what's the one? Amityville. Yeah. We've known for 
30, almost 40 years, 30 years that that was a hoax? Ask somebody about it. Yeah. They'll still tell you that that's real. Even the, the guy that wrote the book. And the house, like people go by the house and take pictures of it yeah. and stuff. I don't think that's as bad as it used to be. I read something on them not too long ago. And I, and I think it helps that they've changed the appearance. And Yeah, it doesn't have those two eye-looking windows in it anymore. Yeah. There was one. What was the movie that came out? Is it Was it Conjuring? There was one that came out recently. I think it was that one, the people from The Conjuring House. Of course, now we live in a world where we have Google Maps. Mm-hmm. You can actually, like me right now, if you didn't have you know, any of these things at your disposal, mm-hmm. it'd be pretty difficult for us to take on the road. Like if we didn't, if we put our phones down and closed the computer right now and I said, let's go find the Amityville house. Mm-hmm. It'd be hard. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't even know if I'd be in the right state, but yeah. either way, was it Maryland or New York? New York. I think it's New, York, New yeah. York. Okay. But now we have Google maps. You can pull up the street address and see what's in the driveway. And, all. and, and when that movie came out, People were going up to the house, and I think it was The Conjuring. It may have been a different movie, but the the new story after the movie came out was how much trouble all these people were having, kind of to run people off and turn them away. Mm-hmm. And go, this is not a movie set. This yeah. is, we live here. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the house is not haunted. Go away. Haunted by a bunch of d- rude tourists. Yeah. Uh, with Google Maps and or Google Earth going on. So oh, see that stuff doesn't scare me. The ghost stuff or the monster stuff, like the stuff that scares me, is stuff that could actually happen. Yeah. You know, like the Psycho, that kind of thing. The Psy- Psycho is one of those movies that really scared me when I was little. Mm. And I think it was because it was possible, you know, that it could happen. And it wasn't really bloody or gory or anything. No. It was just very suspenseful. And there's this, and that's one of those, there's just, you never get back that first time. Right. Watching it. You mm-hmm. just never, you never get over there. All right. Well, um, we've kind of already eased our way into it. So let's talk about, let's talk about movies. I have a list, which is the greatest horror films of all time. Now, there are a squillion of these lists. Yes all over the internet and they're all different the reason i kind of picked this one and went with this one is because this one is completely user generated it was at ranker.com there's no movie critics or it's it's all there's like 160,000 people as of today right that had contributed to this list let me kind of open it up and uh well, I guess first maybe I should ask you, do you really enjoy... Some people don't really like scary movies. I love scary movies. movies. They're my, okay. okay. Yeah, I, I well, what would be, uh, you know, and I won't hold you to anything. I know you may, it, it changes day to day when you ask people on the spot. But mm-hmm. if you had to put together a list of what are your top two, <coughs> three, four, five, what would be in your top ten list if you don't want... I, you know, Jaws. I watched Jaws when I was about six or seven. I was on a trip to California. And uh, we went to the beach the next day, and I still I remember being extremely scared of Jaws. And I still, when I watch it, I still get a little goosebumpy when I watch it. Interesting you say that. Now, I would make the case, mm-hmm. I'm kind of splitting hairs here, I would make the case that Jaws is not a horror movie. Mm. However, you are your assertion is supported by the, the other people who are contributing, mm-hmm. who are not like-minded of me. Believe it or not, Jaws did make the top ten. Sweet. Number nine. Number nine on the great horror films of all time at Ranker dot com. What else? Well, you mentioned Psycho. Yeah, is that that's one that sticks with you? Yeah, I like Psycho. You know, I like all the old Af- Alfred Hitchcock movies, The yes. Birds, Vertigo. Yes. You know, those are all really good. He had a just a real sense for what was actually scary. Mm-hmm. You know, without doing all the crazy effect, special effects and blood stuff and birds comes in at number 35 uh I'm, i have a really i have several pages and a long list so some of these are hard to find i'm not going to look for vertigo because i doubt it's probably on yeah, here probably i would not. certainly not qualify vertigo as a, a horror movie it's uh, suspenseful which is interesting though now when you say the birds i can i can get on with that i can i can qualify the birds as a horror movie jaws mm-hmm. though i don't know i don't know why i have a you know jaws i think the scene like when they're when Richard Dreyfus is going underwater and is investigating the boat, and that guy's head pops down, I mean, like that's like one of the scariest moments I remember out of any movie, especially when you see it the first time because you don't expect it. Mm. He's underwater; it's just a real low spot in the movie. You know, he's picking this shark's tooth out of the hole of the ship, and then this disfigured head comes down, 
that you could tell was attached to or not attached or whatever. But, I mean, it was just scary. It was just suspenseful right there. I was never – don't dislike it, but I was never a big – jaws person not like a lot of other people are you know that it, it's on everybody's list not even just great horror movies it all usually comes up on great movies and right. spielberg's masterpiece and all that i have not watched it you know front to back in a long time it, it, have you seen it recently does it hold how does it hold up oh, i've got it i've got the like boxed edition okay dvd set but yeah i love that movie i watch it all the time you feel like it it's still it still holds up. It still looks good for you know, a modern You know, because that's one, another one of those things that is actually, I mean, it could possibly happen. There could be a shark out there that's, I mean, now not the extremes that they go to in the movie, but, you know, I mean, there is legitimate fear of sharks. Does it, again, having not looked at it in forever, does the shark still look pretty good? No. No, the, no it looks horrible. What's his name? Bruce. Brucey. Bruce. Bruce. Bruce the shark, yeah. But, you know, I watched all of them, and, and the first one, though, the shark does look the best, I think, in the first movie. The really? one, the one with uh, Lewis Gossett Jr. and I think it was like the third one. That's the worst one I think at all. Were they at Sea World? Oh, I wouldn't even. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even know. Yeah, they're at Sea World, and the shark is definitely, definitely like the very beginning of maybe CGI. I don't think it's CGI. It's probably just where they drew it onto the film stock itself. You could tell that it's not the real shark. Nate, we've watched a lot of horror movies and so we may have watched so many that i don't know it'd be i don't want to put you on the spot do you have any anything that jumps out immediately uh, as a favorite not really i think freddie jason movies are on my top 10 i would have said zombies for you guys oh mm-hmm. our favorite are zombies yeah mm, perhaps i well i don't know if funniest I'm... thing nathan ever said that one time was i was talking about you guys and your zombie movies and he was real little and he said that's how me and my dad roll <laughs> and there was one we liked that was almost a uh, a horror comedy called Slither. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and you know what, son? I, I again, I've got a long list. I I think I might have actually it might have actually made the list. There's uh, no way. That is the craziest movie. Isn't it though? There's a bunch of them though that are comedy horror movies that are just hilarious. Scary and, movie. Yeah. And that is our favorite Cindy because we're big Mr. Pibb fans when he's like I told him to get Mr. Pibb. It's the only co- <laughs> it's the only Coke I like. Yeah. Well, Gretchen, what about you? Now I know you don't typically you're in a weird twilight kind of place because mm-hmm. you will watch and have watched and sometimes enjoy scary movies, but then generally though, I don't get the impression that you do like them or what's where it, it depends on the movie. I like like of course, my ghost movies, but I like a ghost mystery. What I you, like. What do you mean by ghost mystery? Well, Scoop, where Scooby Doo? <laughs> like you're. <laughs> Sorry. Oh I, yeah. Okay, I see what you did there. Okay. I, w- I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you rotten kids. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what comes to mind is um, the Ghost Whisperer. I love that, and she was just spending every episode trying to figure out where this person, you know, had died and oh, what yeah, the Jennifer story. Oh, Jennifer Love Hewitt. The, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. and so she, she was trying to help that ghost move on. I like those kind of scary things. But, you know, when but it... that's not really scary, though, is it? Some no. of it was kind of... Some of the ghosts were a little creepy. Yeah, yeah. They, okay. they would always show up real, real creepy, and then she'd figure out who they were, and then they'd change. But like that where they they find out because i don't know why but you know at first i'm real scared and then when they find out the mystery that i'm like oh that wasn't so scary like yeah okay when the when the the otherworldly spirit they make it human you have to have closure is what you're yeah. saying you can't just leave the ghost out there it's not a ghost a, it's just, gotta be gone it's not just yeah a, i don't like it when they hack people up and you know the, this group of people slowly gets killed off you know i don't like those kind very much but there is an influx right now of hilarious zombie movies i've noticed lately that like every time you turn around there's a new and you know it's like the b movie grade straight to video yeah. but they're all zombie movies and there's probably a hundred of them that have come out in the past year and the whole zombie thing which is interesting because it's had a, a resurgence then kind of disappear for a while and then it'll resurge and disappear for a while and because I remember back when I was a kid in the late seventies, early mid eighties, you know, when Romero was at the Romero, height of his yeah. game, and once, I think that first one came out what in sixty eight or something. Yes, because he tells Romero tells the story about them just having finished the movie. They had the film in the film cans, mm-hmm. were driving it across country, trying to get it in a hurry, like Smokey and the Bandit, trying to get it 
to the theater in the film cans and they heard on the radio Martin Luther King Jr. had been killed hmm. as they were driving. Just his story, not mine, yeah. but interesting. So, yeah. That, uh, but after that, now, there were people that, that worked with and around Romero that, again, tried to hmm. capitalize on the dawn of the dead and then the day of the dead and all that. Dawn of the dead was huge. I mean, yeah. night of the living dead, yeah, it, it's still huge and still holds up, but... That Dawn of the Dead thing, I remember when I was a kid, that was just incredible, you know, and until you had seen it, mm -hmm. you knew the kid on the school bus that had seen it. Right. I, the, the makeup and special effects on those is just amazing. Cause this is before computers and before all that stuff. I mean, now it looks a little Have hokey. you seen it? Now, I was going to say. But, uh, yeah, you know. I don't know if it holds up. It, uh, still for the time and what they had available to them. Oh, yeah. They did some pretty amazing stuff with, you know, corn syrup and. <laughs> they use. Yeah, which is weird night of the living dead and maybe even day of the dead which had a lot of gore and a lot of practical effects but dawn of the dead which is probably one of the bigger of his works really doesn't they all had a all the zombies just had that same gray blue hue mm -hmm. to their skin but you know in the last few years of course now with walking dead and all the the, the resurgence of the zombie movies and stuff i think what happens anytime anything stays popular long enough it's going to eventually kind of become self-reverential or um, what am I trying to say? It's going to get into parody yeah. and satire right. very quick, you know, with Sean and Dead cultural and pop arty right and, now. Yeah, yeah. It's like we all like this, and so now we're going to do something and have fun. A lot of in, It's almost like an end joke mm -hmm. for, for, for all the zombies it's fans. It's funny, though, stuff. the people that are like... You know the doomsday preppers that are preparing for the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> yeah, and they call it that, too. It's like we're preparing for the zombie apocalypse. It's ridiculous. I, yeah. Have fun with that. I know there are those doomsday preparation types out there, but, I mean, are are there some that are legitimately yeah, yes. I saw, uh, thinking there's going to be a plague of the I saw a documentary, undead. and it's, one of the guys was cool. He was like, uh, you know, we're not preparing precisely for a zombie apocalypse. We're preparing more for... Uh, just whatever could come at us. Mm -hmm. We're thinking that's the worst thing that could come. I see. So if you if you kind of overshoot it and prepared for the undead to walk the earth, you're pretty much good if it if it checks in at something a little a little less. Yeah, <laughs> but then some, like there's some things like the government. I think even has like a action plan for a zombie apocalypse. Like in yeah, the FEMA yeah. manual, they've got like a a plan of action in case. I wonder about that. You know, that, that circulated on the Internet for a while, and I know folks have talked about it. And what was interesting is when they asked the government, mm -hmm. you know, if this was actually true, they were like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, which is, yeah. I think, was so great because it means one of two things. Either it is, yes, absolutely true, uh -huh. or no, it's not. And they, They're they, just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> because what happens if they go, well, no, of course we don't. Oh, That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, they have to say that. Yeah. They have to tell you that. A million of people online, they've got one. They just don't want to share it with that us. Would, and that would totally be me. <laughs> yeah. That would t it's like when I worked at the, uh, when I used to work in the radio business, one of the things that would happen when you would get, when you would get snow in the area is snow, snow breaks radios, in case you didn't yeah. know that. Because we would get inundated with phone calls constantly, even never mind that we're announcing every thirty seconds on the radio that right. school is closed or school is open, and and every call was you know well, we're announcing it constantly. My radio's broken, so I figured out real quick snow breaks radios, mm -hmm. and I got to a point and it's real. I shouldn't tell on myself. This again, it was a different life. I wasn't very nice then, but I would just lie. <laughs> I'd be yep. School starts at eight a.m. You better get there. Yeah, and, and then they would go. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> Almost like they already knew. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't back off of it, you know? I, I, so. I had a friend whose phone number was like two digits off from the Pizza Hut in Knoxville. Oh, wow. And he would get phone calls all the time for Pizza Hut. And at first, you know, the first couple of years they lived there, he was like, no, this is the wrong number. And then like. Towards year three, you start taking orders. <laughs> you know, would you like pepperoni on that? And, you know, people call back mad. He wouldn't answer the phone. And, and, <laughs> and uh, the folks at the pizza place are trying to figure out why their Yelp reviews are so yeah. bad. <laughs> These folks on Yelp are just killing us. Yeah. Now, I've always been kind of, um, and, and I like a lot of different kind of horror movies. I the, the ghost ones don't interest me as much, but I will the haunting ones, but I will watch them. And occasionally, occasionally you, you, you get a winner. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of varies on what they like in entertainment. 
I've always been kind of a uh, like a killer on the loose kind of guy. Oh yeah, and maybe it comes from my like also my my appreciation of the superhero mythology and stuff too, where there's your characters and your actors are mythological, mm-hmm. right? They're bigger than life. They're not normal average people. You know, they're Superman and Lex Luthor and stuff. Right. Uh, Magneto and Dr. Doom. And it's kind of like for every bad, there's got to be equal yeah, good. I can, know. I can almost kind of throw Jason and Freddy Krueger and, that kind of occupies that that same place for me. The um, and, and I like the survival element. Like mm. I mean, like with a ghost. I mean, how do you know what the rules are? Right. You know, if the ghost haunts the house, and in reality, when is a ghost? Even people that think ghosts are real or haunt the house, when does a ghost ever hurt anybody? Mm-hmm. We're scared of them, but yeah. why? You know, you never really hear. Yeah, like the ghost stabbed me or strangled me or whatever. Yeah. But in this instance, you know, how do you, you you just you continue to stay in the house and you call. Mm some weird person to come exercise or burn right sage or whatever you know it's what about those exorcism movies do you like those like the exorcist exorcism of molly hartley or there are the problem with those is there are very 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 few good ones yeah kind of like with the zombie craze and a lot of other things like when the exorcist came in um 73 it became a cultural phenomenon and what happens? The knockoffs begin to follow. Right. And a lot of the Italian horror directors and, and European directors, everybody wanted to take a stab at it. And there just really weren't any good ones. And even today when you see yeah. something in the exorcism and it's just kind of like for every exorcist, mm-hmm. there are a hundred more that are throwaways. Mm-hmm. And to the point it's so bad like the zombie stuff, there have been some pretty good jewels in there. Mm-hmm. Even so, when you see something that says zombie this or that, yeah. you'll give it a moment. Even some low-budget stuff was pretty good. You'll give it a moment just to see, well, wait a minute, let me see if this is any good or not. But like the exorcism stuff, all those movies, there have been so many bad ones that like when I see that word come up, exorcism of this and the exorcism, it's like, oh. I roll my eyes immediately. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even want to really give a lot of them a chance. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's not fair, but I mean... Uh, the Exorcist was lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was absolutely lightning in a bottle. I don't. Why are you shaking your head? I, it's absolutely true. People. Linda Blair spitting pea soup. I didn't That's say the best. I didn't say you had to like it or not. What I'm saying is, it became a cultural phenomenon. I mean, it it took the world. People lined up for blocks to go see it. You've never even seen it. No, <laughs> but no. <laughs> Do you think it's possible? I mean, because they, they talk about exercising demons in the Bible and the New Testament. Do mm. you think today that's possible? I don't personally. Yeah. I think it's a far stretch, too. I won't I won't waste your time or everybody else's time sitting here trying to make a case for it. Yeah. Just, just to keep it simple, I don't. But that's, I don't even hold that very hard. Right. Like, absolutely not. And let me argue and make a bunch of points. Not really. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many, again, there's so many things that we misunderstood and you know if we didn't know better and in a primitive mind if we saw you know if we saw a paranoid schizophrenic we saw people on the street in nashville yeah sitting there talking to themselves i mean not even talking to themselves carrying on full-blown arguments Mm -hmm. with phantom people right so the case can be made you know is it demonic possession is it paranoid schizophrenia Mm -hmm. it's kind of like i used to say like when a few years ago, again, when I was working in the radio business, we had some kind of massive storm come through and it blew a bunch of houses away. And for days after, the meteorologists were debating and trying to discern whether or not it was caused by uh, an actual tornado touchdown or was it just straight line winds? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Does it matter? <laughs> You know, if, you, if you lost your house, yeah. do you gain anything? But you, you know what I'm saying? Right. So. I don't know. I'm, I don't take a hard opinion on it. But I just, was wondering because, you know, a lot of those that happened happened in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, of course, they've happened for hundreds of years. They've had the exorcisms and that kind of stuff. But I just wonder how much of that was just not picking up that it was actually something else. And, well, again, and, and, you know, coming in – exactly. And coming into the modern, the modern age now, maybe this is kind of what you were touching on. Yeah. How much of that do you hear now? Right. How many people do you know that it will even tell you a second or third hand story? It's funny because when I was a kid, even where I grew up outside of Nashville, yeah. 
kids on the bus had a story about, oh, that house over there, there was right. a girl that was possessed. And da, 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 da. I remember that when I was a kid that there was people that, yeah, I remember my grandpa saying that somebody had an evil spirit in them, you know, or something like that. And, you know, I just wonder how much of that would be with today's medicine and that kind of thing. If Or truthfully, truthfully, uh, from a spiritual standpoint, a lot of it just gets into semantics and word choice. Right. Because I even, lest I sound like too much of a cynic or skeptic, I mean, I, I argue that, you know, points in my former life that yeah. uh, I don't even know how to explain it, you know, was was – entertained or in a spiritual realm that was not in a good one. Right. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean, you know, that I, that I saw winged horn manifestations and, and all that kind of stuff. But is it not just as real? Yeah. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? When I'm in danger of, of dying and hurting other people. So the thing is, when we start having that discussion about, is it real? Is it not real? We already are starting from a premise of, is it real according to what I've seen in movies? Right. According just, to what does it look like that? I don't I just wonder if like having a priest come out and do the exorcism ritual and throw the holy water on them and I just, I just don't know if that has any effect on somebody. I mean maybe a mental effect where this guy comes out and goes through all this stuff and you know, in your mind, even if you don't know it, you're thinking, Okay, this is serious, I need to get straightened out. Power you know? of suggestion. Right. Well, and again, it comes back to that. How much is that done? Mm-hmm. Is, is that even done or performed? Or is it just the fodder for Hollywood screenwriters? Right. And that's kind of what I tend to think. Mm-hmm. Would I make the case that there that there aren't uh, spiritual forces at work against all of us out there? Mm-hmm. No. Do I think it necessarily looks like what I see in a, in a Hollywood movie? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I think we'd spot that pretty quick. Right. Yeah. You know, that'd be... And maybe that's what's more sinister about That'd it. That'd be front page news. I think it's a little. I think it's a little more subtle than that. Right. Now, what I was saying about this movie, The Exorcist, when I call it "lightning in a bottle," meaning that these folks got together, made what they, I guess, they thought was a pretty good movie, and maybe knew it would be controversial. But like Star Wars, had no idea. Right. I mean, it's one of those things that it. It, it wasn't just like, you know, a good movie came out that year and won a bunch of awards. It it was a cultural shift. It was a Godfather. It was a Jaws. It was a right. it was a Star Wars. I think it, it played on what the culture was going through at the time when the Exorcist came out. The culture was going through, you know, the hippie phase, the drug phase. They're getting past all that, trying to establish what was going on in their lives, and maybe that hit a note as to maybe what was going on. I don't know. And then Star Wars just came along that time where things like that were possible. You know. If if you looked at anybody in 1978 and said what would 2000 look like, they'd probably say something about like Star Wars, you know, the androids walking around and laser guns yeah. and you know. But that's not the future, right? That's a long, long time ago. Yeah, in a galaxy far, 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 away. far away. Okay, since you touched on on uh, space, I was going to say my favorite as as far as horror movies go is the whole Alien series. Ooh. Those are my favorites. Yeah. I can answer any alien lore, a folklore question whatsoever. I love those movies. On our greatest horror films of all time, it's at number five. Aha. Now, which one? The original? Alien. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I'm kind of at the same place with this. Although I can, no, I'll concede this. I can give, I can give Alien a firm horror movie. Yeah. Step. Aliens, the second one, not no, so much. Yeah. That's a, that's pretty much a straight up science fiction action right. movie. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the original Alien, yeah. I, I think you know how oh. they didn't show the alien really. You just got glimpses of. It. I think it's the first time they really did that, where you didn't see the monster. You just got a glimpse of it, and you knew it was there. Mm-hmm. That suspenseful kind of well, uh, the dread, right? Right. All about the atmosphere. The the the. There's so many things that work there. The claustrophobia. You feel the heat in the ship and. In space, no the, one can hear you scream. The exhaustion yeah. that you've been up there, so the isolation, the darkness. I mean, you've got so many different things playing up there, and stalked by an enemy or a predator that you have, you have no preconceived ideas about it at all. Right? You yeah. don't know what it is. You yeah. Know? At least we can pretend like we know something about a grizzly bear chasing us, or mm-hmm. in this instance. But yeah. I'll, okay, I'll, 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 I think that one can go now. Now, see, they put aliens on the list. Here it is. It's at twenty four. Oh. The sequel. I would not put that on a horror movie list. I just don't think that's a horror movie. But 
Uh, okay. Hey, here's one. This the, I thought of you when I saw this one. It's it's down the list pretty far down at 45. Child's Play. Oh, is that good for you? I've never seen it. I've never seen it or any of them that came after it. Because there's, I mean, that's pretty bad as far as dolls go. Yeah, I've never. He's the king. Of, he's the king seen, of the I, wicked dolls. I will not see it. Yeah. No. No. Me neither. I, something about a doll going nuts with a uh, knife in his hand. Nope. <laughs> I I actually saw like a a little snippet of it, and it was him screaming, and and just just a man screaming just really unsettled me and i was like okay i never want to hear that again yeah i don't have to watch those movies i'm, I'm good with i mean i don't get scared very often but i will not watch chucky uh, i have a love hate relationship with poltergeist i watched oh, that yeah, one I when i was i when i was too young and it bruised me and so like sometimes because my brother you know he has it for nostalgia reasons and i'll be like put that in see if i can handle it and then that i hear that and i'm like turn it off turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> based on a true story yeah sure <laughs> yeah that's an interesting one too poltergeist um well it was toby hooper mm-hmm. the guy who made who gave us texas chainsaw massacre another awesome movie yeah but so different i mean when you consider the 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 look the feel the budget the the production the production that was on chainsaw mm-hmm. he went completely up in the other direction right. you know for poltergeist it, you can and it's still in a lot of ways it still holds up some Talk of, about a hate for clowns <laughs> yeah that one and yeah. it are why i don't yeah I, i'm leery of clowns I, stephen king's it was the first big book i read mm-hmm. i was like probably seven or eight i read stephen king's it mm-hmm. and that was an awesome book my my first one was Misery of his. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Does that classify as horror? Is yeah. Is that a horror story? Well, let Kathy me tell Bates you. scared the heck out of me. <laughs> we should have was... started with the whole we should have started with the whole qualifying conversation about yeah. what makes horror. Well, I don't know why. I don't know why I picked that book up and started reading it, but I went to a friend's house, my best friend that I stayed with all the time when I was a kid. Her mama saw that book sitting there and she said, "Don't you ever bring this trash in my house ever again." <laughs> So, of course, you went and read it, like, immediately. I was immediately. mortified. I was mortified. No, I don't think I ever did finish it. Oh. <laughs> well, let's kind of, let's finish up and, and, and end up here with this conversation. Maybe we should have started there, but I didn't want anything to get too heavy. and Maybe mm-hmm. maybe this won't be too heavy, but there are some that, since we, 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 we at least operate under the pretense of being a a church related or faith based kind of show, even though we don't get into it a whole lot, but there are some that we don't have any of this Halloween business at all and mm-hmm. we shouldn't do any of it and it's pagan or evil or do you guys have any thoughts on that? I mean I know I think I know how you all personally feel, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here having a good time talking about candy. Well, I'm and not gonna go and out and dance and... around a fire and chant. I'm gonna just, you know, dress up and give candy out to kids. That's all I'm gonna do for this holiday. I think, I mean, if you look at it, if you take it in a spirit of being something bad or pagan or, I mean, then it's bad. But, I mean, if you just got your kids out there dressed as Batman trying to get candy, what's wrong with that? Well, you you pretty much took the words right out of my mouth. We can talk about the nuts and bolts, and I can sit here and make an academic debate and give you some of the, and, and I'll do some of that in a minute. But here, let me start here. This is what bugs me about church folk. We don't have to take the joy out of everything. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, the whole idea of me, me and you sitting down to even start doing this in the first place was that in addition to the other things that we enjoy, the movies and the music and, and games and the comics, whatever else, all the foolishness that we have talked about in, in recent months, is that we – enjoyed the experience of going to church we liked being around church folk like being in the church and 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 can have fun with it right and i know people don't think that and this is maybe one of the reasons or people don't think that kind of stuff because listen if you're some of those church folk that just want to take the joy out of everything knock it off it it, it aggravates me about church yeah. folk it, it bugs me some of the the different sex of christianity or pseudo christianity that don't celebrate holidays you know why would you not celebrate a holiday why would you not celebrate christmas or thanksgiving i mean it doesn't make any sense to me you know though i can't agree with those folks but i will give them respect for going all in yeah you know what i'm saying because my whole thing would like people go well the halloween is is uh it's pagan and all and yes it is it's its origins 
go to this uh, Celtic. Uh, it's called Samhain, but it looks like Samhain. Everybody's seen that. Or in, where the pagans celebrated harvest season and the boundary between the living and the dead mm-hmm. dissolved and the evil spirits caused trouble for the living. Well, as the Christian church grows in the first century, as we were prone to do with everything, we kind of hijacked it and took it because people were already celebrating. Them. Right. They, like, imagine this, you know, we've already got federal holidays on the calendar that we look forward to taking off and getting paid for every year. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so did these pagan folks. And it's like, if we want to convert to Christianity or whatever, we don't want to lose our holidays. Right. You know, I mean, I don't mean to be flippant about it, mm-hmm. but there's, there's a reason and there's a logic behind it. And even the name, Halloween, that's not pagan. That's Christian. So it's I, from it's from the Hallow's Eve, All Saints Day, that's, right? That's what I don't like either. Is like, okay, we can't have a Halloween party, but we can have a harvest festival. You know, what's the difference? Mm-hmm. The kids I, are going to get candy. I'll go you one better. <laughs> yeah. Are you allowing bunnies and uh, eggs on Easter anywhere around your church around Easter? Yeah, those are yeah. pagan fertility symbols, right? Does that, that's does, what, that's what I was going to say. Aren't all the holidays based off yes. of something pagan? Yes. yes, for the reasons I described, because the people had already held them, just like we. I mean, we have people that we have folks that we will never see in church. They're going to take a day off on Christmas Day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there are some holidays that are that are already. There are folks that that there may be young people who didn't get the right kind of education, didn't pay attention in school. They're taking a day off on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah. I have no idea who he is. Don't even care. No. Yeah. You know, so, again, if you want to be consistent, that's why I give those other folks a pass. I'm like, hey, if you're not going to do birthdays, Christmas, if you're not going to do anything, mm-hmm. fine. I mean, I, what? how can you argue with them? It's like they're, they're going to be consistent. And that's yeah. all I'm saying is if before you get read about Halloween and want to try to take away everybody's fun, then I want to see all the symbols, the the secular Christmas symbols that that go back to pagan traditions, all the 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 Easter bunnies mm-hmm. and the eggs and all that stuff. It's all got to go. It's all got to go because all that stuff is. is but but see what purple bunnies are cute. Yeah, right. Painted eggs. Well, yeah, they, are pretty, and they make a mint when it comes to those seasons. You know, the stores make a fortune selling that stuff. Oh uh, yeah. It's just, and, and, I think and, they had Christmas out in August. Valentine's Day doesn't even exist. And man, you, <laughs> yeah, Saint Valentine. Yeah. yeah, that's a Hallmark holiday. That's a retail yeah. Think how holiday. much money they, they make. create those. Yeah, yeah. Just to make money. Mother's Day, yeah, Father's yeah, Day. Those are just those are just to get just to get Dad's money. Hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> got to give those women what they want to hear. <laughs> so, you know, is it is it a pagan satanic holiday? Yeah. Is it a Christian holiday? Yeah. It's it's whatever you choose right. to, but to to not let your kid get like we used to have the old Ben Cooper mm-hmm. costumes, the vinyl costumes mm-hmm. that yeah. went over with the the one piece mask. Yeah. Those things, there's a big collector's market for those. Yeah. If plastic you still have them like in mask. box or yeah, you you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. even if it's cold out, you're gonna not sweat. be able to breathe. And- <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little tiny hole in yeah. the, in the mouth that you could not breathe one. out of. But it's so much fun, and and you nailed it right at the beginning of our conversation today. What does it do? It fosters community, right? Your kids are out. We're on the street. We're talking to neighbors. We're going door to door, or, or we're gathering in trunk or treat parking lots and stuff. What good do you do for yourself, your faith, your church by sitting at home? With a sour look on your face. Turn your, your front porch, porch light. Because <laughs> you're not talking to anybody. Uh-uh. You know what I mean? You're not doing any good. Well, like with me, you know, I don't I don't see my kids every day. But it gives me a chance to spend a night with them. You know, they have fun getting the outfits together and getting dressed up. And you get time to spend walking around with them, listening to them. You know, why would you not want to do that? You know, why would you not want to spend that quality time with because your kids? Because there are some church folk that think if anybody's having fun, there's a problem. <laughs> and we got to figure out what the problem is. You know, it's Can't why we pe- out there dancing in the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Footloose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get foot footloose on Halloween, but yeah, it's, is it evil? It's evil to the extent that you buy into what you put into it. Right. I mean, you want to put on a costume and have some fun, let your kid dress like GI Joe or Baptist GI Joe. one. I could not, I was to earlier today trying to prepare for this. I don't have a very good memory of most of my Halloween costumes, dude. I don't know what I remember, used to dress up like. I remember we had a clown costume that went through the family that my grandma made. 
So there's pictures of us all dressed like this clown, the same outfit, wow. you know, through all the years. And then you know, I remember having the, the costumes, like you said, the little mask and the little thing you put on. Mm-hmm. And uh, mine was Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah, that was mine. Your favorite one or your. Well, you know, I grew up in in a Christian home. My dad was a preacher. So while he was a preacher, we never went out trick-or-treating but i was about 10 years old when we first were allowed to go out and trick-or-treat and that costume was wonder woman mm-hmm. and i begged him i said dad please you're not a preacher anymore let's go trick-or-treat right they it's, still gave you <laughs> costumes are big business now like i went to, i took my girls out to get them the other day and it was like 45 bucks <laughs> for two costumes really wanted to be supergirl and sophie wanted to be this like girl skeleton thing with the tutu i don't know she really liked it so and that's great too it never has to make sense no of course not be completely arbitrary the girl skeleton thing with the tutu yeah just Mm -hmm. throw it all in yeah Yeah, whatever man just 20 bucks yeah yeah just she had to make that feminine that oh yeah yeah it had to be a girl skeleton yeah i mean you don't have to compromise yourself but man to hold yourself up and be angry when everybody else in the community is out there and there's so many opportunities. That's an opportunity to talk with people. That's an opportunity to make an impression with people. And you know, and if your five-year-old wants to dress up as a witch, she's not going to go out and conjure some evil spirit and try to like, you know, boil bunnies in a cauldron. She just wants to dress like a you witch because she's she on will, TV. You know what that will do? It will offend the Wiccan people. <laughs> For furthering negative stereotypes of, right. of our Wiccan culture. We, we are not green, and we do not have warts on our noses. So you know what? Go for it. Yeah. Because I don't particularly care <laughs> that your Wizard of Oz witch costume offends the Wiccan people. Right. So, in perspective, they are not encouraged we, by that at all. We put way too much stock in what our five-year-olds think about you know. <laughs> We're awful concerned about it. Yes, yeah, I hope she wants to be a witch. Maybe she's going to grow up to be a witch. Maybe she is dabbling in the dark arts right now. Maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, she's setting up her box in a in a pentagram in the bedroom right now. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, let's bring this this thing home. Uh, we've gone we've gone uh, giving the folks a little extra for their money today. So if we can get Nate to shut up over there. No, you did a good job though. You jumped in. Yeah. You did. You jumped in at appropriate times. You I'm jumped try in. Try to at... jump in a little bit more next time. Okay. Well, now see now you're getting warmed up. So keep your shirt on. He's trying to take your shirt off over there. <laughs> you can close your bedtime, isn't it? No. Hey, more importantly, we want you guys to know that we love and appreciate you. We thank everybody for listening. Uh whatever you do, however you choose to observe uh, this candy costume holiday, whatever you want to call it, please, please just do it safely, man. Mm-hmm. We just want everybody to be safe. And, and, and Don't want any kids to get hurt. Don't no, want anybody to get hurt. No injuries, no vandalism, none of that nonsense. My house gets vandalized every year. Check the Are you serious? Oh, every, well, I won't say vandalized. My house gets rolled every year oh, no. from the kids at church. They, they take a, a real interest in making sure my house gets it every year. <laughs> Last year, I think they used about 10 rolls of toilet paper, and I had forks stuck in my yard. Oh, no. Like all our plastic oh, yeah. forks. Yeah. That's not, that's not real vandalism. It was hilarious. Yeah, I think it's funny. Is. So so no eggs? No, no. Oh, okay. No, okay. not yet. They're getting older now, so maybe that's coming. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'll guard your house this year since oh, I man, can't those are it. those are murder to clean off, those eggs. <laughs> you don't want that. Don't wish for that. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's bring this thing home. Uh, who have we got with us today? Nathan's over there. Gretchen's over there. There's Randall. I'm Pastor Dave, as always, wishing you all a safe and happy Halloween. Nathan, tell them who we are. They that believe. Um.